If you've been watching football for a while, you may have picked up on a few tactical trends that make players unstoppable. Always finding space and making the next move. Players like Kevin De Bruyne, Busquets and Toni Kroos all share this ability to make everything they do look effortless. Well, this is because they follow some simple tactical instructions that can be applied during any moment of the match. And in today's video, we're going to be breaking down three tactical tips that can help you improve your game. Welcome back to Football Meta. If you enjoy this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Now, the players mentioned earlier are certainly not the only ones to have mastered these abilities and are simple tactical instructions that can be applied at any level of the game. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right in with the first tactical tip. Indirect play. The concept of indirect play from free kicks is pretty well known. It means that more than one player has to touch the ball before it can be considered a goal. But what about this concept in open play? Well, it can be seen in the same way, except the goal is your teammate. Essentially, what this means is that great players have mastered the ability of receiving the ball indirectly after intricate passing moves to find themselves in more space. For example, let's say your team has a goal kick and you want to move the ball to the fullback because there is more space to exploit on the flank. The goalkeeper could kick the ball directly into the fullback with a chipped pass. However, this move takes time and is rather predictable, given the goalkeeper's run-up, body shape, an arch of the ball giving the other team time to set up, closing off back passes and forward options. A more effective way of moving the ball to the fullback would be to do it indirectly through the holding midfielder. This is because once the first pass is made into the centre, the opposition will usually tighten their shape to avoid any more passes getting through, meaning the fullback has more time and space on the flank to receive the ball. This move is slightly riskier than a chipped pass. It could be intercepted in the centre, and the opposition get an easy chance on goal. But the higher the risk, the higher the reward. And if the team is successful, it means they could instantly break two pressing lines and create an attack. The concept of indirect play can be applied at any moment during the match. Another example is the holding midfielder. Let's say you want to move the ball to them to help the team gain ground. However, he is being shadow marked by the striker, so a direct ball to them is out of the question. Now, to move the ball into holding midfielder, one of the centre mids could drop deep to create a passing lane past the striker. And by moving the ball through the centre mid, the holding mid now has space ahead of them to break the press and start the next move. Players such as Kevin De Bruyne have mastered this ability, often hovering behind the opposition's midfield, making them feel safe that the team can't move the ball to him. Suddenly, the striker backs off the defence, receives the ball and lays it off to De Bruyne, who now has space in the most dangerous position possible, picking out the wingers or attacking the back line. De Bruyne is the highest ranked midfielder in Europe for expected assists from open play, and his vision is some of the best in football history, creating 3.62 chances per 90. Last season, he had an impressive 23 goal involvements in 30 Premier League matches, and a lot of this is thanks to his excellent positioning. If you want to know more about the stats in this video, check out Sockerman for an in-depth player analysis. The link is in the description down below. Now, many successful managers have based a lot of their footballing philosophy on this principle, with managers such as Pep Guardiola taking it to unprecedented levels, especially during his time at Barcelona. A lot of Pep's positional play was based on the idea of putting the wingers such as Ronaldinho or Messi in favourable positions, such as a 1v1 with the fullback. So Guardiola would have the whole team play in a certain way to create space for their most dangerous players. Rather than going directly long, the team would slowly move the ball between themselves, luring the opposition in before quickly moving the ball out wide where they could dribble and create opportunities. The whole passing move could essentially be seen as an indirect way of moving the ball to their most dangerous players. Now, that's obviously a very oversimplified version of what Pep's positional play and Tiki Taka was all about. But the principle holds up. By disguising your true intentions, it can create a much more dangerous opportunity. Now, let's move on to tip number two. Moving up or coming short. This tip is focused on a player's movement when a teammate is in possession of the ball. A good rule of thumb that can be applied at any moment is to move up and away from the ball if the teammate isn't being pressed, and to move towards the ball if he's under pressure. Let's make an example. Suppose your centre-back is in possession and you're the holding midfielder. If the centre-back isn't being pressed by the opposition striker, then the holding mid should move away from the ball past the opposition's first line of press. Because by doing this, it could create a quick passing lane for the centre-back and break the first pressing line. 
Let's say the holding mid does the opposite and moves towards his teammate to create an immediate passing option. Well, all this does is mean the striker can instantly mark two players. A pass into the holding mid would simply be closed down, and now the team has one less option in midfield to move the ball forward, while having gained no significant advantage in moving up the pitch. However, if the centre back is under pressure, then the holding mid in this case should move towards the ball to give the centre back an outlet option. Dropping either side of the striker could work, but moving behind the striker and receiving the ball indirectly could be even more beneficial for the team. Again, this principle can be applied to any situation. Another example can be seen between the attacking mid and the fullback. Let's say the team finds space on the flank through the fullback, who starts to push up. An instinctive reaction of a lot of players would be to move closer to the fullback to receive the ball. But all this would do is allow the opposition to quickly close off both the fullback and the attacking mid, forcing the team to rotate to the other flank. But if the attacking mid moves past the midfield into the space in front of the defence, then a quick diagonal pass could cause a lot of issues for the opposition. As soon as the fullback is pressed, the opposition will have to make a choice. Either close off a pass centrally, meaning the attacking mid can still receive the ball indirectly, or close off a pass out wide, meaning the direct pass is on. This movement is very common for Midzale, a special type of box-to-box -box midfielders that constantly look to position themselves in between the lines or in the half spaces. An expert of this principle is Inter's Nicolò Barella, dropping deep if the teammates are being pressed, but also recognising when a teammate has time on the ball, allowing him to gain a more advanced position to help the team in the final third. Barella is considered as one of the best box-to-box -box midfielders in Europe, with an expected threat of 5.18. By taking a look at his heat map, we can see how he is constantly finding space between the lines and in the half spaces, showing how he has mastered the idea of coming short if the team needs help or attacking the space behind the midfield to help the team move up. Understanding when your teammates need support will instantly make you a much more versatile player and will help you save a lot of energy, given you won't be endlessly trying to get on the ball in positions that don't help your team progress. The third and final tactical tip is a combination of these two principles and will take your understanding of the game to the next level. So up to now we have spoken about how the best players in the world always seem to get on the ball in the best position possible. But another important part of their game is knowing when a teammate is in a better position than them. Freeing up passing lanes is a lot harder to master than it may look. And a player's ability to drag a defender out of position to free up a teammate is certainly a very underappreciated skill. For example, let's say the fullback wants to move the ball forward. The winger is marked and the striker is behind the midfielder. The only option here for the fullback would be to move the ball into the centre mid, but this pass won't accomplish much. It hasn't broken any pressing lines and the centre mid will not be in an ideal position given his back being to goal. A clever player in this position would make a dummy run into space, drag his marker out of position and free up a ball into the striker, who can lay the ball off to the wingers in space. It's a pattern that can be used to get the team out of tricky situations. Imagine your team is trapped in the corner, a player darts towards you and the defender naturally follows him forward. This could free up space in behind for the ball to be chipped into, and suddenly the team could find itself on the upper hand. Just as effective when under pressure, it's a move that's extremely dangerous in the final third, as darting runs into the box could actually simply be disguises, being used only to find a player in a better position. A player to have completely mastered this ability is Real Madrid's Luka Modric. Modric has a very fluid position during the match, coming short to help with build up or moving up to create chances in attack. For this reason, he is often man-marked by the opposition, as they know he often holds the key for the team. A movement that Modric does exceptionally well is making dummy runs into positions where he can then receive the ball indirectly. For example, the fullback is in possession, and Modric has dropped deep to help the team with build-up, and so is in line with the holding mid. From here, Modric will curve his run forward and round the defender into space, where an indirect pass from the holding mid now means Modric is in an extremely dangerous position. Now, the main difficulty of this move is that it does require your teammate to be on the same wavelength as you, not falling for the dummy run, passing it straight into feet and losing possession. Nonetheless, these three principles occur consistently throughout the match, and when put together, add up to one extremely dangerous player. And now, let me know what you think. What do you make of these three tactics and what other tactics occur all the time during a football match? Let me know in the comments down below, along with any suggestions for future videos. 
As always, if you enjoyed this content, then please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching. Thank you.